Good morning, Centers for Spiritual Living. It is November, November 1st. Can you believe it? This season, this year has just flown by. Now, if you haven't turned your clocks back, you probably need to do that now. It doesn't matter when you see the service, but just a reminder, we are, we rolled back, we fell back one hour, so make sure you do that. So this week, we're gonna change the format just a little bit. We're gonna head right into announcements, and then after that, I'll join you at the conclusion of announcements to introduce who's doing our meditation and our music, all right? Be right back. Does practicing your dribble of a basketball make you a better shooter? And does working on your golf grip make you hit the ball straighter? Or are these fundamentals, the basics that create a better player? Your spirituality is the same and getting back to basics with Dr. Joe on Mondays at 10 a.m. will help you be a better you. Put it on your calendar, make sure you are there. Dr. Joe in this unique format wants you to be in his virtual classroom and participate. When you join the class, in the comments will be a link. Simply click it and be brought into the green room and then into the live class. It all begins Monday at 10 a.m. Tuesday, the book study with Reverend Charles and New Thought motivational speaker Jeff Onseely continues. The author, Kendi's concept of anti-racism, re-energizes and reshapes the conversation about racial justice in America, but even more fundamentally points us toward liberating new ways of thinking about ourselves and each other. In How to Be an Anti-Racist, Kendi asks us to think about what an anti-racist society might look like and how we can play an active role in building it. Join them Tuesday as they dive into chapter 17. You are invited to join in the conversation. Wednesday, the sensational six are back. What happens when you gather six unique and creative humans and mix them up with science of mind? Magic, simply magic. Make sure to join in and join them for another life message, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Are you searching for a greater sense of purpose as you navigate the second half of your life? Join Dr. Laura with her guests, Walter Drew and Barbara Dorn Drew, trained facilitators of the Conscious Aging Program of the Institute of Noetic Science, the intersection of science and profound human experience. Noetic science reveals a deeper understanding of our inner worlds, our shared reality, and the interconnection between all things. This is the power Dr. Laura is bringing each Thursday to her new show, The Higher View, Thursday at 10 a.m. Imagine if you can, every decision you make before you take action has been run through a filter, a filter of love. Would it change the way you interact with others? Would it change the way you interact and speak to yourself? Now imagine this is the world we can build one heart at a time. Join Reverend Charles Friday for Life on Love. It is a live show and you are encouraged to arrive with questions and leave with answers. Start your weekend with a dose of love, Life on Love. Saturday is a special day. It is a guided meditation from one of our staff ministers. In 30 minutes or less, you can truly hit the reset button and literally, like wiping the words from a chalkboard, start anew. Join them for a soul cleansing guided meditation Saturday at 10 a.m. Please note, if you ever miss these live and wanna go back, they're always ready for you on demand. Simply go to the center's YouTube page and they are waiting like an old and trusted friend to support you when and where you call. Besides a Sunday service being available on demand beginning at 6 a.m. Sunday morning, the virtual prayer room staffed by our prayer and supporting ministers will be available in a private personal setting like the Ohm Room from 11 to 11.30. So if you are seeking support, they are there for you. All of these and other weekly activities like on the first and third Mondays of the month, a special supporting group for extra special people. Caregivers Connection Group with Reverend Brad Wenker or the Grief Group on Tuesday and the Power of Eight on Wednesday and the Social Eights on Thursday can be found on the homepage of the website. Just scroll through the banners until you find the one you need and then click on it to join or to find out more. If you want more information about any of these activities, please just call the office at 760-346-346. 4649. So before we go into our mission statement and our meditation time, I wanted to sort of do a brief introduction to Reverend Gail. Reverend Gail Morton is one of our newest staff ministers here, and her ministry has been devoted to helping people heal through grief. 
She's going to be conducting a workshop starting in mid-November. It's, it's called Helping People Heal Over the Holidays. I think that's what it's called. But the, the important part of that is we want you to engage. If you have any kind of feelings of grief or loss, Reverend Gale is an expert in this, and she will help guide you through certain processes to help ease this time period over the holidays when you're grieving. So I highly encourage you to enroll, call the center. We'll have all sorts of information on how to get involved in her classes. And so we greatly appreciate everything she's done. And we know that you will benefit greatly from this workshop. So now it's time for me to introduce Reverend Gail and for her to do our meditation and opening statement. Good morning. Here at the Center for Spiritual Living, we have a mission statement that describes what we aspire to be as we live our statement. Please join me today as I state our mission statement and we live it. We are a dynamic, open, and positive faith community that accepts all religions. Our mission is to awaken you to your divine nature, empowering you to create the life of your dreams. We are changing lives one heart at a time. Welcome to one of my favorite times of today's service, which is our silent meditation. Please join me by softly, gently closing your eyes or lowering your gaze, doing whatever is comfortable for you as you prepare for today's meditation. Feel the seat beneath you, supporting you fully right where you are. Just give yourself permission to be right here and right now as you enjoy the next few minutes of our silent meditation. Get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done and everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won And everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To this present moment here To this new beginning here and I'm seeing life so clearly now get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul get ready get ready my soul take a 
breath, settle in, and join me in today's prayer. There is only one life. That life is God's life. I know that life as perfect. And I know that life as my life and all life right here and right now. And whether I choose to call this amazing intelligence, love, peace, joy, or spirit, I know, I know that it is the creative presence that moves in, through, and as all things. It is the only thing that is happening it is the only thing that is going on, whether I see it in the beauty of nature around me, or I see it in the birds as they nest and as they move forward to gather all they need for their next safe journey. And I am alive as spirit, and spirit is alive as me. And as such, I know I am one as and with this one. And as I know this is true about my life, I know this is true about the life of each and every person that is here today. And from knowing this, I fully realize, I claim and I affirm that today's service is a gift. It is a time to come together. It is a time for deep connection. It is a time to feel that deep connection through spiritual community. And I know that whether it's through today's message, today's music, or maybe the meditation, I know that there is something absolutely perfect here for each and every person who gathers for this service. And I am so grateful, so very thankful for all of the positive energy that has created this blessed, filled service. I now release my word as law, and as I do, I trust it. I accept it, and I simply let go and let God do its amazing work. If this resonates with you, Palm Desert, please join me in saying, and so it is. Amen. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul everything I've ever done and everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won And everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To this present moment here To this new beginning here and I'm seeing life so clearly now get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind.
kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul get So, our entertainment today is a very special guest of mine. Uh, he is, has been my partner for 32 years. He created this video quite a while ago, but it is now more relevant than ever, especially given the events that are about to take place over the next few days. I just figured it'd be time to listen and experience my husband, Trey Eisenhower, once again. Here's Trey. Not afraid this time I'm on my 
And now it's time for us to acknowledge the work that our center does in your life. We do that by giving back to the center and on your screen right now will be several ways for you to donate. Uh, I don't need to tell anybody 2020 has been a challenging year and our Sunday donations are down significantly, but we greatly appreciate everything that everyone has done up until now. And we encourage you to engage and continue to support us so that when we come back from all of this experience, the center is what it was when we had to close down. So now I welcome you to connect with whatever source you'd like to and donate to our center. Hey, so the title of my talk today is You Are a Spiritual Broadcasting Station. I have a little story for you. When I was growing up as a little kid, at our house, we had this big stereo and it was in the living room. And I don't know why we called it the living room because no one was ever in the living room. They were always in the family room. It was just this room that had furniture in it that no one ever went into except me because I created a stage. In my mind, I was on stage. I would take, uh, that's okay, I would take my brush and I would sing the tunes of Cher and Michael Jackson at the top of my lungs and I would just go at it and my mother would say, Joey, turn the stereo down and they'd have the doors closed to the other part of the house but I just kept jamming because I knew that I had a message and I had a, something that I wanted to share. And so my talk title today, I can get rid of this, my talk title today is, You Are Still a Spiritual Broadcasting System. I had an affirmation that I had planned for myself today and that I've been working on all week. And I'm gonna share it with you. Take these words as your own, listen to them. I am the high flying vibrational frequency of love and light. I am the high flying vibrational frequency of love and light. Today I broadcast this message to all of God's creation. You are a broadcasting system and you are a high flying, not high, like smoke high. You are a high flying vibrational frequency of love and light. This week is going to be particularly challenging. I know it because the election is going to be on Tuesday and there's going to be all this energy around it. I want to make sure that members of our community are vibrating at the right frequency of faith and not fear. It's very easy to fall into both of those camps and I want you to make I want to make sure that you're rolling into the one that has faith. So here we go. We are a vibrational beings. We are constantly broadcasting into creative law the particular vibrational frequency of our thoughts, beliefs and feelings. We are constantly emanating into this creative energy through our thoughts and our actions and our feelings at a certain vibration. And you know when you're vibrating on a great level or a really positive level, we also know when we have low level thinking and low vibrations. Every feeling, belief and thought has a natural vibrational frequency. It's easy to tap into other people's vibrational activity and frequency. You know this because there are certain people when you're around them, man, they vibrate and you, you, you can't wait to be around them. They have this energy, they have this connection, they have this charisma. Conversely, you also know that there are people whose energy you go, oh, I just know this is gonna be the longest, longest lunch of my life. We all know those things, right? So we know the energy. What are you? How are you vibrating? If I said, to, if I asked someone, hey, look, how do you think so-and-so vibrates? What do you think their response would be about you? Are you taking responsibility for the vibrational frequency that you put out into the universe? We attract to ourselves the same vibrational frequency we're tuned into, much like a radio dial that tunes into a particular frequency. <laughs> I have this new car. It's not new, it's an old car, but it's a new car to me. And it has this system that I still haven't figured out, even though it's been months, but there are thousands, and I do mean thousands of choices to listen to. And it is mind boggling when you try to figure out which ones you want to listen to. But the same thing happens in our own lives. The same experience is happening daily. When it comes to our health, we choose what station we want to listen to about our health. Is it a positive station that's uplifting me and motivating me to do the right things? Or is it a negative one like, oh, another day, oh, you hurt so much today. 
Are you vibrating on that level? Which one are you vibrating? Ask someone close to you, they'll probably tell you which one you are vibrating at. But same thing that goes with your relationships. Are you vibrating in a high frequency, trying to keep things fresh and alive? Or are you vibrating in a low frequency, which means your friendships and your relationships are somewhat challenging. People are constantly at odds with one another. How are you vibrating when it comes to your financial security? Are you knowing that financial success and freedom are yours? Are you working actively toward that, changing your vibrational frequency? Or are you vibrating on a level of scarcity, of fear, of lack, of limitation? When you go through all of these things, you realize that there are times in our lives that our frequency needs to change. We need to change the channel. And now just like we tune into a particular frequency on the radio, you're constantly tuning in in every, every moment of the day, you are tuned into some frequency, some vibration. It requires us to sit back and ask ourselves, am I tuned in to what I really want to experience and listen to? So ask yourself that question. Here we go, right from textbook. God, as first cause, is the original broadcasting station. He didn't say that, I'm paraphrasing. Extending its vibration out into all of its creation. To the degree that we tune our radio dials into the same vibrational frequency as the original broadcaster in our thoughts, beliefs, and feelings, we demonstrate God's loving vibration in our own lives and ultimately the world. Love this. God, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call this, as first cause, it is the original broadcasting system. And it has given us a lifetime membership. It's not like Sirius Network where you have to like pay monthly or whatever that is. You are given a free lifetime membership to this vibrational frequency station. And it says, to the degree that you want to tune in. Do you remember when you were a kid? I remember when I was a kid, we had this thing called the AM, FM radio dial. Kind of archaic, right? The AM dial. Do you remember the AM dial? Whenever you would tune into the AM dial, it would go, and then you'd hear faint words. And then if you tuned it just enough, you got it. And suddenly you go, don't move it, don't move it, I found it, right? We do the same thing in our life. We begin to, we can fine tune our AM dial, our mind dial, and, so, and sometimes it squeals, sometimes it's not clear, sometimes it's fuzzy, and you hear shh, that sound, that staticky sound. But then eventually you begin to hear the light. You can begin to hear the idea of love unfolding, the idea of something new unfolding in your life. You begin to hear it, and it's, it's a fate, it's off in the distance, but the more and more you concentrate, and the more and more you tune yourself into that vibration, suddenly you lock in and the music is perfect, you're grabbing your brush, you're doing your number. Does that make sense? I hope so, right? Now we get to share that vibration with not only our lives, but the lives of other people. How are you transmitting to others over the next 48 hours, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right? Over the next 48 hours, I would love to monitor everyone's tra what they're transmitting. Do you think, do you think you're up to the task of staying in that consciousness that all is unfolding for a higher, greater good, no matter what the outcome is? Are you ready for that? Is that the frequency you want to line up with? Because there's a lot of channels out there that you can tune into that are going to create a lot of chaos a lot of confusion, a lot of fear, and a lot of anxiety, and a lot of angst. And we can internalize all of that if we choose to tune into that vibrational frequency. Next thing, the laws of mind or spirit are not different than the laws of chemistry and physics. Metaphysics begins where physics leaves off. Everything is movement. Everything we can take hold of and analyze, all things in the physical world or the world of form are in certain rate of vibration and are an effect. The most important part of that statement is this. When you transcend the laws of physics and you are now into metaphysics, that movement, every movement that we can analyze is in the world of form and is an effect. And every effect can be changed. Every effect can be the cause of something else to change. So just because an effect turns out a certain way, if something happens in the next couple of weeks and it turns out a certain way and a lot of the people will be pleased and some of the people will not be pleased. Remember, it is an effect and every effect will be the cause to its next effect. We just have to make sure that we keep our vibrational frequency up 
at a level where we are confident, where we are clear, where we know that we know beyond knowing that all things are unfolding for a greater good. Next part. Water, ice, and vapor are all the same substance, differing only in the rate of vibration. The highest vibration which we experience is from love. So now I want you to analyze all the different emotions that have been flowing through your ex life experience over the past few months. And there are so many of them. There's a whole host of them. And I want you to start looking at those and thinking about when love begins to show up, how does it change the vibrational frequency? And what I've noticed is this in my own personal life. When I am feeling somewhat challenged, <clears throat> depressed, anxious, and, and I have to be honest, I'm going to be really honest. The past few nights, I've been waking up early in the morning, like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. And there, and I've been waking up with a sense of angst and anxiety. And it wakes me up to the point where I, I literally, I get out of bed and I have to remove myself because I don't want to wake Trey up or the dogs. And I just want, I, I remove myself and I've actually got to go down to another, uh, another bedroom and I've got to talk myself out of that. I have to talk myself out of that space by talking the right stuff in and reminding myself about what is happening and what I'm doing to create this anxiousness, this fear and this anxiety and how I am feeding into it. The second I do that, the one thing that changes is the concept of love, unconditional love that the universe has for me and all people. And once that little bit of light begins to just start to ignite within my consciousness and the idea is there just by the slightest bit, I can see that there's an opening. And when that opening occurs, that anxiety leaves and I go, okay, time to go back to bed. We've recovered. So just remember when you're feeling that angst and that anxiety, this is your opportunity to let love in, let light in. And it only takes a little bit to begin to change the direction of your thoughts. Next thing, God is the original broadcaster. We tune into its vibrational broadcasting frequency to the degree that we are into or aligned with it. That original broadcasting system is inviting us to tune in to the greater good. We are meant to be prosperous, healthy, happy, have harmonious relationships. We are meant to experience peace of mind. And when we tap into the original broadcaster, all of those elements are available to us. The only thing that keeps them from us is us. Does that make sense? The only thing that's going to keep you from your peace of mind is you. Now, you may point to other people because it's easy to point to other people because, you know, this person's making me unhappy or this person's creating chaos or this person. But the reality is, no, they're not. They're just doing them. I'm choosing to align with that vibrational frequency, label it as such as chaotic or disruptive and align with it. And then it becomes mine. <sighs> Misery loves company. They're going to bring you in. No, it doesn't. That's not a spiritually sound concept. Love loves company, right? That's what we want to tune into. That's what we want to change. You know, when you've walked into a room of people and felt relaxed, completely at home, people talk about that when they walk into the center. And I know you're going to walk with the first time we're able to walk into this center again. We are going to experience that feeling like we are home. You know what it's like when you walk into a vibration that feels comfortable and completely at home. Are you creating that sanctuary for yourself in some area of your life, in your home or in your finances or in your relationships? Are you creating in your health? Are you creating a place where people feel relaxed in your presence? Ask yourself that question. Albert Einstein, who actually was a member of the Science of Mind in Los Angeles, he said this, Alex, uh, Albert Einstein, for example, claimed no belief in the traditional God, but he sure as heck knew there was something a lot juicier out there in the cosmos. That, that thing, that juicier thing out there was all he really cared about and said that the rest was just details. Hmm. Somehow, I don't know if it's you or me, I get really bogged down in some details. 
And those details become very heavy. In fact, they become the focal point. <laughs> the effect and the details become more of the focal point than the bigger broadcasting system and that thing that Albert Einstein was referring to. That's the focus. When we focus on that thing, all these little things become the smaller stuff. Next part, love in all of its relatives, compassion, kindness, joy, and many more produce a higher vibration than those related to fear. There's gonna be a lot of fear, I think. I, I, I shouldn't project that out, but I just, I see it playing out already. So let's not pretend it's not there. I'm not one of those who are gonna go, oh, everything's gonna, no. There's going to be people that are going to be fearful of the next few days, few weeks, maybe a few months, I don't know, right? But I do know this, kindness, compassion, joy, they begin to change those fear vibrations, those frequencies. And so we have to find ways to implement those things into our life experience and in the experience of other people so it can begin to lift up the vibrational frequency. Because if we all play on the level of fear, our biggest fears will manifest. And right now, just by opinion, there seems to be a lot of fear vibrating around and sucking us into that fear idea. And we've got to reject it out of hand and become more compassionate, more kind, more joyful, and actually spend more time doing for others. You know, it's something simple. Uh, we went to the grocery store the other day. And it, it, this is just reminding me of something that we've talked about before, about random acts of kindness. And there was a woman in a wheelchair and she was struggling to get her cart and her things up into the counter. And um, so that immediately Trey and I were offering our assistance and we got everything from her cart under the counter. And then uh, we had already processed, we were already paid, we were ready to go, but we wanted to help her out. And then we noticed that she was, um, she was told that she was out of money on her card that she didn't have any money left on her card to buy the few groceries that she had. And these were essential groceries. And I looked at Trey, he looked at me without even speaking, without even talking to one another. He just said to the cashier, he said, put this on my credit card, please. And the woman's like, no, 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 that's okay. I'll, I'll just go, I'll go to the shelter tonight and get food. He said, no, 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 you know what? Here, let's just do this. It's a random act of kindness. Now she knew that we did it because we had checked out with her, but are you extending yourself in any way, shape, or form to be of service of others? To be kind and compassionate, to give up yourself to others? During this time of shelter in, it's been easy to take care of ourselves. And it's been a struggle to reach out to other people because of the distancing and the masks and the distance. But there are things we can do. Are you exploring those ideas? Because guess what? That changed our level of vibration and frequency. Because when we walked in, we were having a couple things go on in our life in the outside world that was just a little chaotic. But when we loaded our groceries, we felt good in the moment. We felt better in the moment. We felt that we had extended to ourselves, to other people, some act of kindness. So what can we do to change our frequency? We know this, we teach this all the time. We tune into our receiver to any station we desire and send out to the law whatever vibrational channel we choose to hold. And we do that by ways of this prayer, meditation, playing, laughing and I mean laughing out loud when is the good time you had a when is the last time you had a good belly laugh I've been watching some shows on TV the one thing that this COVID thing has done is brought me to watching some of Netflix things and I have been laughing hysterically at some of these shows I mean it brings me joy and it changes what's going on I can feel it even change in my intestinal tract I can feel it change in my body when I'm laughing and when I'm experiencing anything that has to do with fun or joy it changes everything so I put ways to create new vibration pray meditation play laugh out loud love give receive receive life's good no matter how big or how small but be in gratitude be in gratitude for all that we have I may, we may not have it all but I want to be grateful for all that I have. Cultivate awe and wonder is the last thing that I wrote there. I want to cultivate a reason to look at this world and not just wonder with the big question mark, but with awe and wonder and see that the goods, there are some really good things that are coming from all of these things that are happening in the world. 
and be awestruck by the size of them, knowing that we are equal to whatever it is. Whatever is out there in the world happening, we are equal to dealing with it because the universe has given us that power, that vibration, that frequency, that potential to continue to deal with and cope with and thrive and thrive in situations like this. The next thing, mentally practice the best case scenario. <sighs> practice the best case scenario, not the worst case scenario. Everybody talking about the worst case scenarios on both sides, on every side, and guess what happens when you talk about the worst case scenario? Everybody's focusing on the bottom vibration and frequency. No wonder the low level stuff isn't moving. That's our sole focus. Faith, acronym for faith, feel as if the thing has happened. Feel as if the thing has happened. Let go of the worst case scenario and step into the best case scenario and keep that your sole focus. Even though outside things may look different or feel different, my focus, my vibration has to be on the higher level today. This week, all the time, but especially this week, so I want to review some things. We are radio wave receivers and broadcasting stations. Grab your brush, baby, because you are on the stage of life. And how what you are singing and how you are singing it, the universe is responding to you at that frequency. We are unified with the vibrational frequency of our creator. It's always been there for us, will always be there for us. The law always says yes, we know this. So I want to return and go back to one of my favorite stations in life. You know how you have favorite stations in your car? You know how you have a, their preset? You don't have to search for them. They made it really easy to hit the button and you're there. I want you to hit those buttons in your mind. When it comes to every area of your life, I want you to hit that button. Hit that button so you align with that frequency because you know what the songs have sung to you in the past. You know what they've done to you in the past because they make you feel so good that you've set them as a preset. I don't know anybody who has a preset that they intentionally set that is set on something they don't want to hear. Anyone? I don't think so. So you know what you like and you know how to get there. The question is, will you take the initiative when you're wallowing in something to hit that button? and go to the spiritual preset. We can tune our radio to dial into any station we choose. We are already one with the great loving vibration of our creator and we activate that in our lives and give it our attention. Make that the focus. Focus, make that the focus. Let us focus on that vibrational energy. And by consciously tuning into the things that are loving, kind, inclusive, and joyous, we will vibrate at a level and that frequency will change our lives and the lives of other people. And the last thing is this, gratitude, compassion, service, kindness are all ways of tuning into the highest vibration available to us and that vibration is love. When you're grateful, when you're compassionate, when you're of service, when you're kind, when you're joyous, those are the ways when we tune into those vibrations, that is the love coming from us out into the universe and in return, we attract that love into our experience, our vibration and our frequency begins to increase. There's a lighter feeling about our bodies and our state of affairs. And when that happens, peace of mind begins to show up. Until then, it seems somewhat elusive. But you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to tune into that frequency, tune into that preset. You are a spiritual broadcasting system. Take responsibility for its content and its feeling. You produce it, you direct it, you choose what songs are on it, you choose what's being said and what's being heard. So you decide what your spiritual broadcasting system is ready to portray. Over the next few days, that's gonna be a really important thing. Don't rely on the other broadcasting systems to tell you how you're going to think. That's your decision. And so would you last. Okay, that's a great message for all of us. We are so blessed to have that message today. So let's just do a closing prayer. So this is what I know. 
I know that there is one creative force in this universe, and it is love, it is divine intelligence. It is all there is. It is that which is seen, that which is unseen. It is that loving force. And I know, I know that I am, and I know each one of us is a unique expression of this one, of this one life. We are all part of this mosaic that we call love, that we call life, that we call compassion, joy, prosperity. So I know for myself and I know for you that all is well. Right here, right now where we are is the perfect moment. There are no accidents in this universe. My job is to be that love, to be that compassion, to be that light in the world. That is all of our jobs. And so as we go forth, we remember that. We focus on what we have, on our life. Every breath we take is a gift. Every moment that we have to interact with each other is a gift. It is an opportunity for me to choose who I am in this moment. And I choose love. I choose compassion. And so I know, I know that this election, whatever it is, it is the right choice. It is the right de set decision to bring us to that realization of what is important in our lives. And what is important is love. It is always love. It is always to come back to that love and to show up what would love do right here, right now. So that is what I focus on this day, every day, every moment, knowing that life is unfolding according to a divine plan that I may not be aware of, but I rest in that place of peace, knowing, knowing that it is always leading us to a higher place. So in this awareness, in this peace of mind, in this state of compassion, gratitude, love, I just relax. I let go knowing that it is all divine, it is all good, because it is all God. And together we say, and oh, so Lord. it is. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you next week.